In college, Nia Franklin became her father's stem cell donor after he was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. When Nia entered the Miss America pageant to help pay for her education, the competition became so much more than just scholarship money. Last September, Nia was crowned Miss America 2019. She's the ninth black woman who has received this title in the pageant's 92-year history. Miss America, Nia Franklin joins us now. It's so great to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm sure it's been a challenging, wonderful year all wrapped up in, into one. <laughs> so far, you've got a ways to go yet. The next pageant isn't until the end of the year now. Yes, December 19th. Awesome, so. awesome. People always ask me this, and I imagine they do you as well, because that video is going to follow you the rest of your <laughs> life. But what was it like the moment that they called your name? Did you feel like it was going to be you? What were you feeling? It was it was overwhelming because I didn't know if it was going to be me. And I was just like, I've made it this far. So I was I was honestly so content yes. <laughs> being in the top two. I mean, that's such yes. an honor yes, um, for someone that just started doing this in 2016. I was just honored to be in the top two. And Bridget was like, you got this, you got this. And I think I kind of started to feel like maybe I do, but I don't know. I don't want to get my hopes up. We'll <laughs> you, see. You want to step over that line of assumption. <laughs> no. <laughs> Let's go back to your freshman year in college. You had a difficult experience come your way with your father and his health. Yes, uh, so unexpectedly, freshman year's going great, making new friends, focused on school, and I go home for Thanksgiving and I'm told to go to the intensive care unit uh, at Baptist Hospital where I find my dad laying in bed fighting for his life and he just looks unrecognizable to me. He's wow. swollen um, due to his kidneys. They were failing actually, uh, and he was just suffering. And I was so um, distraught. I was just crying. I didn't know what was happening. So it was a really difficult moment. And that wouldn't be the last time that you mm. saw him in difficult no. straits. He, he would come along the way, do fairly well, and then relapse again. Yeah. Were, you, were you fearful that you were going to lose him? What were you thinking? Absolutely, I was. I was in denial, though. I didn't want to believe it, and I think in a way that was good for, my, yeah. for me, and it was just kind of a way to, I don't know if I necessarily would call it faith at that point. It was just denial. I don't want to lose my dad, but at a certain point, I realized I needed to um, to to feel what I was feeling, and that was fear, mm -hmm. and I decided at that point I needed to have faith, and uh, I, I did. At that point, you had no idea that you would actually be the answer to his need. How did that happen? No idea. So my sophomore year, I'm going through school and right around the same time, he relapses again. And uh, the doctors at this point said, we have to try something else. The, yeah. the chemotherapy is not working. The radiation is not working, at least not in the long term mm -hmm. since. And so they had the idea to do a stem cell transplant. They searched the general pool of applicants or of, of, of donors and no one was a match they that at that point they decided to look to family and his siblings uh, weren't a match except for his sister but they decided let's look at the children just on a whim they said let's do you have any children and he said yes I do and uh, I was the only one of age to be his donor and I was a match and you were a match that was a match made in heaven yes, as they say absolutely right? <laughs> <laughs> how did your faith impact all of this because you know there come those seasons in our lives where we can't change or or manipulate or maneuver circumstances and we just have to rest in the arms of God. Yeah, at a certain point it was just I, I had to realize that this is up to God. I can't do anything at this point. Yes, I could be his donor, but I also was a little fearful of what if it doesn't work and it's my fault and I'm the one that gave him the stem cells and they don't work. So at a certain point I just had to rest in in my faith and trust that he would heal my dad and, and, and continue to be hopeful and have faith and not give up because whatever God wanted it to be, it would have been. And so just resting in that and, and trusting that his plan would be the best plan. How's your dad doing today? He's wonderful. We just celebrated six years on May wow. 1st of the transplant. And uh, we actually had a, a really cool moment at Duke Hospital. Uh, we donated a piano in honor oh, of, this, of the transplant. And that was last week. So I'm really grateful to uh, the hospital for seeing the need to inspire others through the yes. gift of music and 
I hope that everyone that plays the piano can hear about our story and know that there is hope and you should have faith because you never know what God can do. And that's really your platform as Miss America is sharing the value of the arts. Absolutely. The, yeah, that's wonderful. Has Have you had many opportunities to do that? Oh my goodness, yes. So my, my uh, social impact, as we're calling it now, uh, they changed the lingo with the 2.0. <laughs> and uh, I've, I've been able to do so many incredible things just last month, um, or early, I'm sorry, actually earlier this month, it's, it, it's, I it's know, all running together. You're traveling, you lose time. <laughs> but I was, I was in LA and I had the chance to work with um, opera camp students at LA Opera and teach them how to write compositions. Oh, Some wow. of them for the first time. And that was such a cool moment and something I plan to do more and more after this year, especially um, because it's so important that kids yes. see themselves doing these things at a young age. And, and it was important for me to share that with them. And I've been able to work with the New York Philharmonic, Sing for Hope, and uh, many other wonderful institutions Some across America. America. The great, great opportunities oh my gosh. that come your way. Yes. Talk a little bit about the pageant. It's changed a lot over the last couple of years. No more swimsuit last year for the first time. How did you feel about that? Yeah, there were so many changes that came all at once. Yeah. It was a bit much and change can be a little difficult, yes. but you just have to stay positive. I mean, so many things changed. I had to learn to stop saying platform. I had to say social impact initiative. Yeah. Um, we no longer are referring <laughs> to ourselves as a pageant, but, but a competition. The swimsuit has been taken away. There's more speaking. Uh, a, there's more of a speaking aspect to the competition. And I had to just go for it and, yeah. and just put all of my um, my passion and efforts into it because I didn't know who they wanted. I didn't know what they were going for, but I just decided to be Nia and it worked. So You know, what hasn't changed, Nia, in spite of all the changes you've mentioned that have been very real, is the fact that it's the largest scholarship foundation for young women in the world today. In the world. You can't take that away. And what young woman doesn't both need and want that? Absolutely. And there's so many different ways that you can use the scholarship. It's not just to put towards your tuition or books, but, and people may not even know that, you can use it towards your books and to mm -hmm. your, and, and use it towards your- I studied your, in New York for a year, which was my really? dream. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you're right. It can be utilized. In different ways. For yes. me, for me, it was getting myself out of debt. So um, after my years Miss America, I will no longer be in a massive amount Yay. of debt. <laughs> so I am so thankful for that. I've won roughly $65,000 through wonderful. Miss America. So it's, it's such a, a relevant thing and so important that young women take advantage of it the way I did, because you, if you, even if you don't think that you can be Miss America, you don't, and that's another thing There's too. There's scholarships all along the way. All along the way. And that's why I have 65,000. It's not just because of the ultimate Miss America, um, prize that I won the 50,000, but 15,000 of that came from being Miss Capital City and Miss Five Boroughs and yes. Miss New York. Mm -hmm. So it's all, it all goes to uh, a cause and it all goes a long way. So paying off your loans and a whole new future opening yes. up to you. We wish you the best Thank as you. you continue to travel. It's been great to have you here today. Thank you so much.